Welcome to a code report solution video. In this video, we're going to be covering the solution to a problem from the Code Chef August Long Challenge entitled Shiokand and Number. The problem states Shiokand is good at mathematics. One day, to test his math skills, Kali gave him an integer n. To impress Kali, Shiokand has to convert n into an integer m that can be represented in the form 2 to the x plus 2 to the y, where x and y are non negative integers such that x does not equal y. In order to do that, he can perform two types of operations. He can add 1 to n or subtract 1 from n. However, Shiokand is preparing for his exams. Can you help him find the minimum number of operations required to convert n into? into a valid integer m. And the constraints for this problem are going to be that uh, t, the number of test cases we're given, is between 1 and 10 to the 5, and our number n is going to be one uh, in between 1 and 10 to the 9. So let's take a look at the examples that CodeChef provided us with. So here are our three examples. Uh, the first number here is just t, that's the number of test cases, and then we're given 10, 22, and 4. And our output for these test cases should be 0, 2, and 1. And CodeChef explains this as follows. So for n equals 10, uh, this can already be represented in the form 2 to the x plus 2 to the y when x is equal to 3, which is going to give you 9, and or sorry, 8, and uh, y is equal to 1, which is going to give you 2. So 8 plus 2 is equal to 10. Therefore, we don't actually need to uh, perform any operations on uh, n when n is equal to 10. For our second case, n being equal to 22, uh, the form that we're looking for here is going to be uh, 2 to the 2 plus 2 to the 4 or uh, 2 to the 3 plus 2 to the 4 um, which is going to get us there in two operations by moving uh, 22 to 23 and then to 24 and you can follow this sort of logic uh, for the third case um, but the point is that basically we want to either always uh, perform the first operation where we're adding uh, plus one or uh, always perform the second operation which is minus one it doesn't make sense to do a plus one and then a minus one so we're, e we're either going to move up or move down towards the closest valid m um, so for this question, uh, it's really helpful to understand um, the time complexity of different operations or algorithms and um, what are the limits for this problem. So if we go back to the constraints for this problem, we're given that uh, the number of test cases we're going to have is between uh, 1 and 10 to the 5. And if we use this and combine it with the general rule that um, for each problem, uh, the number of seconds that we're given, you are allowed usually up to sort of 10 to the 8 operations. Um, we, and for this problem, it states that the time limit is one second. Uh, we know that a quadratic algorithm is not going to work. So uh, for each of the test cases, we're going to need to do better than linear in finding this number n, because otherwise we're going to end up with 10 to the 5 uh, sort of squared, which is going to give us 10 to the 10, which is greater than 10 to the 8. So we're no, we know we're going to get TLE, time limit exceeded. Um, so if we know we can't have linear, the next thing we should think is uh, log n. Um, and whenever you hear or know that you're going to a log n implementation, the first thing you should think is binary search. Um, and so how can we use binary search in order to find this number n? Um, usually you're going to have to have some sort of data structure set up first uh, that has these numbers calculated in advance or pre-computed and then if those are sorted or if you're storing them in a set you can use a binary search in order to uh, find the closest one. Um, so then the next question is well how much work is it to calculate or pre-compute these values of m up front? Well we also know that our value that we're given n is going to be between 1 and 10 to the 9 so if we look at the upper limit and uh, because we are always looking for uh, numbers in the form of 2 to the power of something, we know if we take uh, the upper bound and then take the log of it with base 2, we can find out what's the actual number of uh, values that we have if we start with 1 and then keep on multiplying 2. And what we end up here is roughly 30. So it's actually a small number of numbers if we start with 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. If we do this 30 times, we're going to end up with a number that is greater than 10 to the 9. And so using this fact, if we were just to create a, a set uh, or a vector that stores all of the combinations of uh, 2 to the x plus 2 to the y where x and y aren't equal, we're going to 
going to end up with something in the order of the magnitude of you know 600 uh, minus a few because x and y can't be equal so uh, calculating this is actually going to be pretty fast and then performing a log and binary search on it is basically going to be constant um, so that is going to be our algorithm that we're going to work towards so there's two steps one is to pre-compute the m uh, values which isn't going to take much time and then the second step is going to be uh, performing a binary search on our value n and the way we're going to do that is uh, with a C++ solution we can use an algorithm called uh, lower bound which is going to find if not the exact value the first value that is greater than it and then we can just look at the value to the left of that and so we'll end up with two values one that's to the left of our value n and one that's to the right of it and uh, we just want to take the minimum distance between uh, n and each of those values and then you'll end up with the number of steps that you need in order to solve this problem so let's take a look at the code so here is our c++ solution you can see on the first line here we are pre-computing our values m then we're reading in the number of test cases t and for each test case t we'll read in our integer n and then calculate the number of moves or steps to get to n using the uh, set that we pre-computed so let's take a look at our two functions pre-compute and calculate moves so here in our pre-compute function is pretty straightforward. We're just setting up a set of integers, and then we have a nested uh, for loop uh, where each of our i and j indices are looping from 0 to 30 inclusive. And then when i does not equal j, we're just inserting uh, into our set uh, 2 to the power of i plus 2 to the power of j. And then we can just return this, uh, and C++'s copy elision is going to make sure that we don't uh, copy this. And we can also make use of the uh, auto uh, function deduced return type if you're uh, compiling with C14. Then for our second function, calculate moves, we're passing in by const ref our set of integers and our value m. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look for our corner case if our uh, our value n is either 1 or 2. Uh, calling our lower bound binary search function on this is going to uh, lead to a problem. So we just want to check that if it's 1 or 2, we're returning um, 3 minus that value because we know we have to move up to 3 because the lowest uh, m value we're going to get is 2 to the power of 0 plus 2 to the power of 1, which is 1 plus 2 is equal to 3. So we know that that's our lowest value. So this is just taking care of that corner case. Uh, if we're not uh, one of those values, then we're going to call our binary search function lower bound, which is going to retrieve us uh, the value that is either equal to or um, which is either equal to or greater than our current value n. And so then on the next line, we're just going to check if our uh, value or iterator that we found is equal to our current value, we can return 0 because we know that n is already a valid m. If not, we just want to get the value that is uh, the iterator that's before this, so that'll get the value that's to the left, and then return the minimum of n minus the uh, value that's to the left, and the value that's to the right minus n. So these are the two number of moves, uh, one going uh, minus one minus one, and the other one going plus one plus one. So return the minimum of this, and that'll get you your answer. So that's the C++ solution. Taking a look at the Java solution, uh, somewhat similar, but we don't have everything broken up into functions because uh, Java passes by value. You can't pass by reference. Um, so it'll be less efficient if we set up functions. So here we once again have a set in Java. It's called a tree set and uh, the same nested for loop. And instead of inserting, we call the method add, which is the equivalent in Java. And uh, then we're reading in T, as we did before, reading in N for each one of our test cases. And then here we are making sure we catch our corner case. And then if not, we are simply uh, setting our answer to be equal to the minimum of uh, N minus the value to the left or equal to and N or uh, s dot higher minus m, which is the value to the right. So note that we are making use of two functions here, floor and higher. And these are actually two functions from uh, the tree set API. So note that uh, ceiling and floor to go, go together and higher and lower go together. So uh, the difference being that ceiling and floor uh, will return you uh, the elements that are greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, whereas higher and lower um, don't consider the elements that are equal to. So it's strictly greater than or strictly less than and this is actually quite nice um, 
in C++, they have lower bound, which fits into the equal category, and then upper bound that fix, fit, uh, fits into the higher slash lower category, whereas in Java, they seem to split these out, which is pretty nice. So you're never going to get confused. So here, because we want to capture the zero difference, if n happens to be actually in our uh, tree set, we want to use uh, floor for one of them and higher for the other. Or you could also do... Um, lower and then ceiling and that would have the same uh, effect and uh, once we've done this we just want to print out our answer and so the last solution that we have is our python solution uh, once again usually the shortest the shortest of all of them um, here we don't have set so we're just going to use a list and then sort it the nested for loop once again um, making a call to the append method to insert our our sort of add our uh, values to the end of our list and then uh, once again reading in t and then for each of our t's reading in n and uh, here we are setting uh, answer equal to 3 minus n for our corner case and else uh, very similar to the java except here we have uh, find underscore le and find underscore uh, gt which stands for less than or equal to and greater than so this is very similar to the uh, floor, ceiling, higher, lower in Java. These aren't provided to you with Python, uh, but if you go to sort of the Python documentation uh, in the BISEC library, they recommend that you add these functions to your personal API so that you can make calls to them. And uh, that is uh, that. So once you have answer, once again, you just print it out. So those are the three solutions. And the last thing to talk about is the time complexity, uh, which is at the end of the day, just gonna be linear in the number of test cases. Technically, you know, it's uh, big O of N times log N of uh, 600, but that's basically gonna be a constant. So we drop that. As always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start, and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.